Welcome to our devos. We're going to conclude this week on parables. This has been kind of a dirty week because we've been talking about dirt a lot. It's kind of been a little bit seedy because we've been talking about seeds a lot. So this has been a week where we've discussed really the parables that Jesus is mentioning here all about the kingdom. They're earthly stories with heavenly meanings. And this is the parable that is often most quoted specifically when it comes to our faith, and that is the mustard seed parable. This is mentioned in all, uh, almost all of the other gospels as well, but the mustard seed parable, this is what Jesus says in verse 30 through 32. He said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Everything's about the kingdom, about the gospel, about who Jesus is, the mystery. Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants. And it puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make their nests under it. We see a couple things happening with this. And this is the simplest one. And again, similar to what I said yesterday, the impossible exponential potential of what happens on earth when God is involved is beyond our comprehension. He says the kingdom of God is like this mustard seed. It seems like it's not even there. It's this minuscule, small. I remember Pastor Mike preached a couple of years back and he passed out some mustard seeds. They're so small. You would never be like, this is going to change the world. God says, this is what the kingdom is like. You don't see it. It seems imperceptible. It seems almost insignificant. And what happens is the potential is life-changing. Now, the other thing, it says when it grows, it becomes so large, larger than all the garden plants, it puts out branches and the birds of the air can make nests in the shade. When the kingdom of God is on the move, which it is, the world changes. We are expecting this miraculous thing to happen in this big way. And God is like, the miraculous is what's happening that you don't know. That's my work. I'm the one that gets credit for it. I'm the one that brings this about. He said before, yesterday, he's in charge of the harvest. And as Christians, you could do a lot worse with your time than daily getting on your knees and just thanking God that he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop working. He doesn't stop reaching out to people. He doesn't stop redeeming people. He doesn't stop performing the miraculous. And as we pray, keep this in mind too. He doesn't stop working in your life. You abide in him. He is with you. You dwell with him. You're connected to him. And his work will come to pass. He that began a good work in you will complete it. Not because of how faithful you are, not because of how smart you are, not because you have it all going on, but because he is faithful and he is greater than you can even hope or imagine. Parables, earthly stories with heavenly meanings. So don't praise God just for what you see. Praise God for what you know is true of who he is and what he's doing.